Hello everybody. In this video, we're actually going to cover how it is you're going to use the MITRE ATT&CK Navigator. So if you're not familiar with it, MITRE has put together the Advanced Tactics, Techniques, and Common Knowledge Database so that all of us can benefit from open source threat intelligence. Now this is super, uh, super helpful, excuse me, in actually getting a handle on what sorts of threat actors might be coming uh, and, and uh, you might be encountering in your particular environments, but it's also great for understanding the behaviors that they might actually be leveraging. And so in this first video, what we're going to do very quickly is get an orientation around how you use the portal. And then we're going to pivot into the navigator and I'll show you some techniques for how you can put this to use today. So you've certainly got a bunch of capabilities here. You can go ahead and go through a get started, which is a, a um, you know, gets you right into it. You can take a tour. Uh, they've got some wonderful blog entries that are mostly po published on Medium. Uh, they can help you get through and understand how it's used. But the real goal for today is to see how it is we can put this matrix to use. At almost 400 uh, different techniques and sub-techniques, it's pretty, uh, pretty impactful, but it can also be pretty overwhelming. And so what they've done for us is they've really given us a lot of awesome ways that we can pivot into using the, the matrix without becoming overwhelmed. So one of the first things I like to do uh, with, with people that are new to MITRE is to talk about what it is that they're after. And so a lot of times it comes down to, well, what's in your threat picture? And they might say, well, I don't know. Well, okay, so what's your business? Maybe that's the easiest thing we can do. And so if I'm a potentially, you know, a healthcare, I will give that a whirl. It's been a while since I've done a healthcare one. Uh, what it's going to do, you can see it takes a little while as it's thinking, uh, but it's parsing all of the different data within the MITRE ATT&CK database so that it can decide whether, you know, what it is that need, needs to present to us. And what we should get out of this is a listing of all the different groups and software and techniques that are used. And you can see I've got a, a bunch of different results. Um, but let, let's look at something that might be pretty, pretty exciting here. Uh, Wicked Panda. That looks pretty interesting. Let's give that a whirl. <clears throat> and what this is going to do is it's going to take me to that group um, portion of, of the database. And you can see that this one's 96 in the index. Um, there are, if we look at the bottom here, how many different groups? Yeah. We'll get back to that here in a second. I, I believe there's uh, roughly about 200 uh, some odd groups here. But APT41, Advanced Persistent Threat 41, is one of them. And this is a threat to us in the healthcare biz, right? Uh, Chinese state sponsored, that's pretty important to know. Helps you understand, you know, based on geopolitical concerns, what might be going on. Um, it can also show you that they're, you know, after certain uh, other industries as well, telco, uh, video gaming, and, uh, you know, pretty broad coverage of, of 14 countries here. So they're, they're not too particular. And uh, we can see that they also go by the name, uh, you know, Wicked Panda, and that they may potentially overlap with Barium or the, the Winty groups. And I can pivot into Winty and check that out. But most importantly, I can also see the techniques that they might leverage. And so this is really helpful if we're trying to characterize something. Maybe we find out from one of our colleagues at another company that works in the same segment uh, or, or the same vertical as, as we do and is, you know, roughly a similar profile. Hey, we got hit by APT41. You guys need to keep a lookout for that. Well, if that's the case, this is going to help you understand what that entails. And it'll help you understand what sorts of things you can plan on encountering. You can see here that these techniques, the tactics being the goals, the techniques are the ways you achieve those goals. So those are the technical approaches to achieving those goals that the tactics define. So if I'm looking at something like lateral movement or I'm looking at something like exfiltration of data, those are goals and the ways you do them, those techniques are what you're going to see here. And so we, it gets into some pretty good detail and some of these even have sub techniques, which is this. Uh, after the decimal place piece here, that's the, the fractional stuff. And those SEP techniques are important because while we might call it, you know, application layer protocol abuse, there's a lot of different ways that can happen. And so we're able to get more granular and particular about that. And so I can very quickly go in 
I can check the main technique here. I can see all the associated sub techniques. If you recall from the prior one here, the only one that's not listed is mail protocols. So apparently APT41 likes to go after web protocols, file transfer, DNS, um, just it is just, you know, three of, of the approaches to abusing application layer protocols and doing bad things with your environment. And so this is under the command and control bucket. You know, likewise, I can go into command and control and see all the other things that might actually be part of that. This data is just parsed differently than what you see in the matrix. What's really cool is, is you're able to bounce between them. And however you want to research these, however you want to search them, maybe you're aware of, you know, a particular group or you, you're looking and, and very interested in a certain tactic or technique. That's great. You can come at it from any angle you like. Uh, but I'll back the, the truck up here a little bit. And we'll also be able to look and see that, you know, it's got a copious number of things, but it's also got a list of software that might be used. Uh, Cobalt Strike, I know it's supposedly dual use, but boy, do we see it all over the place, right? And in APT41 or or um, whatever we want to call them, is, you know, Wicked Panda is no different. So Cobalt Strike, great command and control framework for good and bad people alike. And they apparently are using it. You can see they are also using Empire, PowerShell-based approach, the you know, Ghost Rat. So there's a lot of things. Mimi Cats, you know, very popular with anybody who's a pen tester. So there is an awful lot of information that's that you can glean here and see the different techniques. You can even hit the references if you want to get yeah, super nerdy here. Um, but what I would encourage you to do is to very quickly pivot into uh, finding an attack navigator. So I can download these for consumption. Maybe I want to pull a bunch of these and then build a picture after I've researched each of the group, these groups. But in this case, I'm going to go ahead and, and treat it like I'm just following the following the rabbit down the hole here. And so you'll see that it's opening up a, an attack navigator, github.io focused website. So this is a very low overhead, super scalable approach that MITRE has chosen. I think it's awesome that they give you this. Notice there was zero logins. There's no credentials required to do this whatsoever. And what they've actually done here is they've highlighted and, and scored for me and provided commenting for all the different places that those techniques map within the MITRE ATT&CK framework. And so, you know, maybe I'm interested in looking at this a different way. Um, you know, I can, I can collapse everything down so that I'm only seeing the mainline techniques, not the sub-techniques underneath. If I want to expand them individually, I can do that. I can see where that happens. Um, you know, I can go through, I can see the CVEs that might be, you know, commonly exploited by them just by seeing how it is that they've annotated this. And so this is pretty awesome. You can do a lot of really cool stuff with this. And I can very quickly go in and introduce other ones. So, you know, maybe I'm actually also really concerned with, you know, I've got a financial element. I'm doing payment transaction stuff. I haven't been able to offload that to a clearinghouse yet. And so maybe I want to add uh, Carbonac as a potential threat here. So well, well, you know, we started with healthcare. Maybe I'm a boutique health firm or something like that. And so what I can do is, is I can download this, uh, this layer and it comes down in a JSON, which includes all of this stuff. And I can simply click on the plus to create a new tab and I can open an existing layer. And when I open up from an existing layer, I can just go here and um, I go to my trusty downloads folder and boom, I'll pull in this JSON and guess what? It's going to create for me a tab that's based on all of that information. And so I can build my threat picture piece by piece. Maybe I'm assembling this threat picture based on purely research at the MITRE attack site, or maybe I'm paying attention to the news or I saw something on 60 Minutes. I want to caution you, don't swing at everything, right? Focus on the things that should be in your threat picture. Don't worry about somebody else's boogeyman. Focus on what actually matters in your environment. In this case, I know I've got a healthcare slant, but I'm you know, I've got some financial transactions. Those are the two threads I'm going to pull. So I can go through and I can build this out and I can do all kinds of, of, of crazy cool things here to manipulate it. But maybe I'm also doing my own sort of, of scouting here. And maybe this is, you know, something where I want to build a, a MITRE ATT&CK 
enterprise focus layer based on things I know. Maybe I had a particular red team exercise or something come through that did something bad to my environment and I'm really, I'm really sore about it. Well, what I can do is, is I can go in and I can actually set up a, a color gradient thing. In my opinion, the zero to 100, nobody's got that kind of fidelity. We're usually better off saying kind of like a one to five type of thing uh, works. And I can choose from different presets here as to whether one is good or bad. And maybe I'm not really doing good versus bad. I just want color to draw a contrast here. And so in my particular case, I'm going to say we've got super great coverage at five. We've got next to nothing at one. Or, or maybe it's, you know, you know, I'm talking about a threat here. So maybe I'm talking about, you know, they use this one a lot versus they use it rarely. And uh, away we go. So in that case, maybe I'm going to flip these. So if they use it rarely, it gets a one. If they use it a lot, you know, it gets a five and uh, you get a gradient in between. And so what I can do here is I can go in and I can uh, unclick that. And I can do these selection controls. And so maybe I want to go in and I want to search based on a particular thing. Um, maybe I'm looking for anything that's got to do with remote access. And when I look at that, I can look at different softwares. Maybe I encountered one of those softwares, but I can't remember what it is. I can go in here and I can say, wow, hey, check it out. There's Ghost Rat, right? Well, Ghost Rat's already covered. Uh, given that we already talked about Wicked Panda. So let's go ahead and, you know, do Gravity Rat. Okay, so you'll see several of the techniques here that Gravity Rat actually uses as part of its software offering to our adversaries. These are enterprise companies, right? These, uh, these software providers to these folks. And so I've selected them. I'm going to go ahead and get out of that. Now you see they remain selected. And now what I can do is very simply go in and score them. And so maybe in this particular case, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to say on average, there are four, they use them pretty, they use these techniques and ghost rat I, or, uh, you know, this particular rat pretty well. I, I don't know. This is, this is illustrative, right? Uh, but what I'm able to do is, is I'm able to then go in and I can add other things to the selection and I can, um, you know, I can do another, sort of things here. So maybe I want to talk about um, automated collection. You know, I'll hit that. I'm going to select that. I'm going to also add, uh, yeah, we'll add these four. And, um, you know, as we do that, did anything new? See, we got automated collection here. Looks like that's kind of the end of the road as far as all the, the, the new stuff. Let's maybe do something a little more interesting here. Um, let's talk about brute. Forcing. And so, you know, maybe I've got a threat group that's super big on, on brute forcing. Well, if, if I look at this, right, and I look at APT28, boy, does that light up a lot of stuff. Maybe I do some research and I realize they're pretty big too. So I'm going to light them all up, uh, but they're pretty, they're pretty much, um, you know, they're a much more sophisticated actor. It's not just a tool. It's the, it's the full enchilada here. They're doing everything. And so I'm going to go in and I'm going to give them another score. And maybe I'll just say two is kind of where they are. And so you can see we can build, uh, you know, scoring. We can annotate these. We can do a lot of a lot of crazy cool stuff. And while I've got them, you know, while I've got them actually highlighted for that APT, I can say from APT, you know, 28 or, or whoever it was, right? And what's going to end up happening is, is that's going to appear in each of these places. So as you're building your testing methodologies, you're building your evaluations and you want to do this, it's a great way to go and, and annotate all of it. And the other cool part is you can name them anything you want. You can say console, you know, red team or something like that. So we've got three different threat groups. That's pretty, that's pretty rough, right? We want to make sure that we're protecting against them, but I don't want to buy solutions just for one. I want to see the, the aggregate is here. So I'm going to create one from other layers. <clears throat> and as you can see, as soon as I do that and I activate this portion of the flow, it provides letters here so that I can identify the tabs for some very easy math. 
<clears throat> so after I select a domain, I'm going to use enterprise attack. That's where I am. It should be said that we do, you know, see that people are now using this for you know, ICS systems, mobile. Uh, but enterprise is, is where most of us are going to be. And uh, maybe I really, you know, maybe ABT41 is really my primary concern. But I want to go ahead and, you know, take into account Red Team and, uh, and Carbonac as well. And so what ends up happening, I can choose where the gradient comes from. I kind of like what I set up here in, in console. Um, you know, the coloring, again, from the console tab. It, this lets you mix and match. Whichever one get, provides you the most information, great. Maybe APT41 is, is, you know, richer on the, uh, the data, you know, in some of the fields. And if there are links and stuff like that, I can certainly do that as well. Um, but what's awesome here is I can now create this composite layer. Oop, hold on a second. It likes, it likes the math to be much cleaner here. And it just put together a nice composite threat picture for me. So I can talk about threats all day. But understanding what the, the aggregate number of techniques are that they are more likely to use and having some ideas to which ones are the bigger concerns that's huge, right? And so this is a great way to build those, those technique graphs. And likewise, I'm able to do things uh, where I'm able to pull in a defensive version of this. So maybe, you know, I've got something along the lines of, um, open an existing layer. I've got something along the lines of, you know, something similar to what our friends at Talos put together um, some time ago, uh, which allows me to go in Sorry about that. Go back. Too many folders. It's the uh, issue with everybody. Um, maybe I want to look at, you know, Talos quarterly report on like visibility concerns or something like that. It's a different version. We're going to import it anyway. And we get something like this. You can see like people can convey a ton of information here. And so what this does is it allows us to say maybe this is our aggregate you know, uh, detection capability. Um, maybe even more simply, we just don't want to do that. Maybe we want to use something like detect, or maybe we want to highlight different mitigations. Um, so I can go in and I can do uh, enterprise-based layer, and instead of focusing on threats, I can actually go in and do mitigations and say, well, what sorts of things are we actually building out here? Um, well, maybe we've hardened our our um, Active Directory, we've deployed AV, um, we're using, you know, good account use best practices, got some misandboxing, we enabled boot integrity, we do all these sorts of things. Hey, and backups, it's key to everybody, right? Uh, we've got some DLP going on, um, we encrypt, we're segmenting the network, hardening the OS config, do some NIPs. Uh, all of these things, password policies are enforced. All of these things can really, as you see, start lighting up our, our constellation here. And you can score them. You know, maybe you got three solutions providing coverage versus one. That's okay. Uh, in this particular case, I'm going to go ahead and give them a three. We're going to just call it average. And I don't like the fact that three solutions covering all those comes up red. So I've got to go back and change my color setup here. And so what I can do is, is I can, you know, talk about uh, red to blue and I can say zero is bad and four is good, something like that, right? Four solutions covering something should be pretty, pretty decent. And what I'm able to do now is I'm able to see I got, you know, purple, right? And I'm going to clear the selection. I'm going to enable a few more. So restricted library loading. Um, you know, threat intelligence program, we're doing user account control and, oh man, user training. Who wouldn't want to do more of that? And we're doing vulnerability scanning. Maybe these things, we've got a whole lot less solutions providing coverage, but we're providing coverage nonetheless. And so maybe these here, they get a one, right? What we're able to then do, you know, we'll call this our defenses. And you can break it out by segment of the environment or whatever you want to do. Uh, but once we've done that, it's very easy to go in and now set up another layer, create from others, and we're going to just do a very simple 
D minus E, right? And so uh, that what this is going to do is it's going to take our consolidated threat picture, apply our defenses to it, and show us where the gaps are. And so this is going to really help us understand, you know, what it is that we're up against. And, um, you know, maybe I'm not going to bring over things like that. Um, you know, I would, yeah, we'll, we'll keep that red team picture there. Actually, you know what, let's go ahead and uh, we'll choose our coloring scheme after the fact. And uh, we'll just come through and we'll create it and we'll see what ends up happening here. And so what we can see is, is that we've got certain scoring or we've got some minus ones, which is awesome. That means we've got plenty of protection. We've got things that are a little higher. So maybe it was a five and we, you know, hit it with a one or a two or something like that, brought it down. There are a lot of things here that help us understand where we need to focus. And so we might call this one our, our gap analysis. And so this is, uh, you know, this is really important stuff here because what this allows you to very quickly do is to start assembling a threat picture and understanding what that threat picture means. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of like the, uh, the, the kids movie with them, with the monsters, right? Every kid's got something that makes them scream and everything else, not so much. And so what you want to figure out is, you know, is it the, is it the claws? Is it the fangs? Is it the, you know, is it the roar? What is it that's going to cause you pain? Is it going to be the, the exfiltration, the brute forcing, you know, what are you most vulnerable to? And then once you've got that, you can start seeing how it is that you need to defend against it. So we'll just for the sake of completeness here, call that threat picture. And when we look at this, right, so we've, we've kind of walked through the process, but what's really interesting is, is in any of these things, I can right click on it and I can go check out the technique, right? And it's going to pivot directly to it. And while I can see all the threat actors, there they are, APT-41, right? The, the Wicked Panda folks uh, back again. Um, I can also see the mitigations that help me understand to, how to reduce things. So, hey, if you're worried about, you know, bits jobs, right? And you don't like bits jobs, um, you know, the, the, the Windows background service is coming on. You know, what can you do to help? Well, you can filter network traffic, right? Uh, to only allow legit stuff, uh, operating you know, system hardening, user account management. These are just all like the basics, but it's amazing how often we all forget about them. And sometimes it's going to imply things like, hey, intrusion prevention or, you know, antivirus, anti-malware or sandboxing. Great. That helps guide you towards what sorts of mitigating tools will help you reduce your risk in the most meaningful way. <clears throat> and if you're looking to detect and you're buying things for network visibility or, or um, you know, file integrity or what have you, this is the kind of stuff that you want because it'll help you understand all of that. So really cool, awesome tool, not one login in the whole thing. Um, as you go back, you, you certainly want to save your work. Like each of these layers, you can download as a JSON so you can populate it. It comes with all the work already done for you. So I would go through and just boom, 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 boom. Download each of these in succession, save them to a place, and I can instantiate them. If I want, I can even go on to GitHub, take this code and deploy it on my own persistent MITRE attack matrix for all of us to work through. That's also an option. And if I want, I can also export it to Excel. So if you prefer to work on spreadsheets and use things like OneDrive or SharePoint to, to manage versioning and collaborate and all that good stuff, you can do that as well. And lastly, what would any of these graphics be without an ability to present them to your, to your management? You can do, download these as SVGs so that they're very easily embedded as, as beautiful vector graphics in your documentation so that this can be useful to them and help really draw the picture for them pun intended. So hopefully this has been useful to you. There's a whole lot more to MITRE ATT&CK, but I really believe that getting familiar with the ATT&CK Navigator is key to unlocking a lot of that potential and can help inform your gap analysis or your threat detection tuning or your red teaming or your, or your um, threat research. A fantastic resource, freely available, and uh, kudos to the MITRE folks for putting this out. So thank you very much, and I hope you had a great time viewing this, please leave some feedback in the comments.
Thank you.